Hey everyone, it's Eric here from Lapfix. Got another video for you guys today. Got a cool, really nice uh, Acer Predator. Uh, is it Triton? I believe it says Triton 500 SE. It's not Triniton. I was thinking about Triniton, but those are the beautiful uh, Sony uh, CRTs that were back in the day. Those massive ones. You go like a 34, 36 inch, and they're huge. They're like uh, very heavy. You probably had like two people to carry them. But no, this is the Predator Triton 500 SE. It's in here for a repair. Uh, it's beautiful. It has a i7 NVIDIA RTX in there. GeForce. I don't know exactly which RTX in it because I don't have the password. Looks like it also has like a 165 hertz screen. So it's really nice. You can see in the corner. It's pretty cool. They advertise it around the whole entire display. And it's a 16 by 10 display. It's actually really, really cool. And this one also has HDMI 2.1. So you're going to be getting high refresh rates if you want to plug it into your 4, uh, 4K OLED display with 120 hertz too. So it does have video out for that. That's really cool. It's supposed to be really, really new. It's really interesting. Um, but it's in here for repair. Listen very carefully. So you hear that noise? That noise is, there's a problem actually on this side. That's where the ventilation is. If I turn on this side, well, there's ventilation all throughout this because it's an i7 and our is getting really hot. There's ventilation, there's a fan in there and the fan seems to be failing. Um, even though it's very, very new, um, looks like the motor actually and the fan actually is starting to fail. Now it could be um, either one. There's usually like a CPU fan or there could be like a separate GPU fan that could fail. Now, if that does have the occurrence, if you ever do hear that noise or hear a screeching noise, usually they, you don't really see a lot of mechanical drives um, too much in laptops anymore unless they have a, unless you have like two hard drives, you have like a NVMe for the main o o OS. And then if you have a gaming laptop, you probably have like a mechanical drive in there. That could be also a noise too, if you're hearing like some type of clicking noise or something else that's going on there. But usually the only other mechanical noise outside of like a mechanical hard drive would be, um, you would hear a fan because the fan's the only thing that's really it does have moving rotating parts everything else is like cables and heat sinks right those things so that is pretty much a good way to see if it is like a fan failure you don't want to be playing with this too much let's actually just get right into the repair this will flip to the bottom here and there's going to be a bunch of screws that go on the bottom cover Okay, so it looks like, see, this is well, this is pretty dangerous because this looks like it has. You see this? There's a little bit of damage here to the uh, heatsink. Looks like this is up a little bit here, and we want to see what. Let's unplug the battery. You can even see the battery tape isn't perfect. Let's go ahead and let's open this up. See what's going on. So we we'll go ahead and plug this. Just make sure we're safe and looks like those, these tapes this tape actually looks to be okay but let's unplug this and see what's going on here because this is a little bit interesting let's take out the display cable Ooh, man you see that let's zoom in a little bit see this looks like there's a little bit of struggle upon uh, the heatsink and i think i know what's going on here so let's untake this, this out right here the fan connection and I'm gonna pop some screws, but um, I think I know what's going on. So if I pop the screws, probably what happened there is that just popping these screws here, see this is even lifted, this isn't actually totally flat. So this is not good and this is dangerous and that's probably why uh, they're in here with a pair. Maybe it looks like it tried to have been attempted before. So if I lift this up and now if I try to lift this, ooh, see how, Bad, oh, this is really bad. So if I lift this up, this shouldn't actually really be coming up here. You can see the part's actually broken here. So that's not actually how you do that. And the reason why this is broken, let me get the other fan because I have the new fan here for replacement. This is the replacement fan. And if we have this here, we see that there are three screws. So it looks like it's more straightforward, but um, it looks like on the other side here, see that there's supposed to be a screw. It probably goes most likely through the other side of the board. So it looks like there's one, two, at least two there. And then there's little latches that hold on here. And then there's probably a grab latch that does, yep, that probably goes in maybe in the corner here so you can actually lift this up. And uh, that's really what it is. So I think what happened is um, they try to remove it. I don't know if it's, it feels pretty stuck. It's loose though, but I don't wanna go too crazy with it. Probably because maybe the screw got broken because it looks like it's actually just kind of lifted up. Let's see, because it doesn't matter at this point anyway. This top right corner is a little bit stuck. Uh, oh, see, so it's not supposed to come up like this. So it does come up. 
Um, that's not how you're supposed to do it because there are actually screws that go through the bottom here. See this? These are actually screws. And this is bad because it's not going to hold down to the fan uh, for the fan replacement. So what we need to do is, I understand what they probably tried to do. They just thought they could actually just remove the top piece of the fan here and then replace it like an easy swap. But nope, they always want to make it this difficult for you and they always want to make this hard. So they want you to remove the whole entire board so you can replace the fan there. Even one of the fans. Fans is a little bit bent here, so this isn't going to be sufficient cooling anyway. Who knows if it was making that noise before or after, or who knows if they were just trying to get better cooling. Who knows? Always, uh, we don't know. Whenever stuff comes in here, we always want to make sure at least it's turning on, that that's a good thing. But we don't want to be using it, or you don't want to be using it, especially if there's a bad fan with a connection, or if someone opened it, you definitely don't want to be uh, doing anything crazy here. So this layout looks very familiar. Um, it kind of looks, it reminds me a lot of like an MSI fan layout or just board layout in general looks very similar to that um, because how everything is on the top here. Usually the top screws are what actually covers most of the board here. So what we need to do is we need to take out the board and then, or at least the heat sink part, but the heat sink's underneath the board. So we need to take out the board um, really to be replacing these, these fans here. So let's go ahead and just do that real quick. Probably won't take too long. We'll just pop a lot of these connections. We want to undo it. But man, that's dangerous. And even this cable, I'm not sure what this, this could be like a power button cable. And that's very dangerous, especially if someone's uh, opening that be from before and it's giving them a problem. We don't really want that. That's not good. So you can damage, if you damage these cables, there are certain ones. Um, sometimes these can be pretty hard to get parts for, uh, especially. And we don't want to be messing with that. So doesn't look like the connection itself was damaged, which is good, but I was, but it's in here for a fan replacement. Not a whole lot looks like there. And this is probably just a cover from static. So we don't have a problem. Sorry, my mic. I should probably get like a USB hub for that. I still don't see the mic all the time. Or at least the microphone cable. Let's take this out. Off that card. Okay, do we have any more connections? Doesn't look like there's a lot of screws, but this might just pop out when we do it, but we want to be careful because I know sometimes on like uh, the MSI models, they have like a power button connection here. This might be that power button connection, so it might be a little bit like of, a, of an improved layout there, but it's not too bad. It looks like, was it one, two, three screws, four? And the top cover looked like it provided some screw room for the rest of it, so battery to might make it a little bit easier to lift it. It's probably just barely getting in the way. Let's lift this up. You guys want the overall view now? There we go. Good. It's not a glue battery, which is good. Okay, so the CMOS was taped here. Okay, we don't need to remove it completely. So I think we're going to go this way. Okay, it's not too difficult. Be careful. Oh, that cable got caught. Actually, be careful with that cable. It's probably the power button cable. Okay, there's the board. Now, I bet if I flip this over, there's going to be screws, right? Looks like there's a screw there. Hold out. Yep, so there's a screw there. Um, nice so, so they even put this is just like the MSI I think I showed a very similar video to it the RAM the sticks are actually on the other side and the NVMe is on the other side of the board so to, to do anything on this you oh that's not bad good view let me get closer okay so we see there's actually two removable RAM sticks on the other side of the board as well as the NVMe drive actually dual there's another NVMe drive that could actually fit right there <laughs> that's really funny they put that on the other side of the board the whole point of this being removable is to make this more easy accessible I don't understand why it would be like this it probably would be nicer right just like <laughs> just like this why couldn't they just make it like this <laughs> it would be the same thing like it wouldn't change almost anything but I guess you know they have their reasons I don't know if they're trying to prevent people from doing it but uh, let's see we have 8 gigs so it's probably 16 gig um, a RAM and what does it say? Five five twelve SSD NVMe, which is cool, but nice here, right? Looks pretty nice. All right, so there's screw. There's one screw there. I don't know if that had another screw that goes there as well. But let me get, just get this up. 
You see that? That just came right up because it's not held in by anything. And I think that might be it. Oh, there's a piece here too. Oh, wow. So they put this little, if you can see this one, there's this little screw they actually put. This is a little casing. This is a piece of plastic that's part of the fan. So if I bring up the new fan, um, let's see if it goes, what, this way? Yeah, there's a little, oh, it doesn't go that way. It goes over, oh yeah, because this is upside down. Man, even, <laughs> just, it's supposed to go up like this. So through here, you see this part? This part actually broke off of the old one. So we have a little screw and then we have this one. So it looks like there's a little screw still attached there. That's what was holding it in. And uh, if I bring it here, this probably show a little better. If I show the comparison, let me get this to the side. So if I show the comparison here of the broken one. There we go. This piece, this piece was the one that's broken on here. You can see it's missing. This is a good example too um, of probably common mistakes or for users that um, or probably want to try to do it themselves. They want to try to take the lazy way out and that can happen. Or if they're not sure or inexperienced, those things do come in that. So you see that part's broken. So let's go ahead and take that off. Let's get a small screwdriver. Okay, so now uh, we had all the old stuff is completely out. And let's just put it in back the right way. Okay, so let's put the new one back. Oops. All right, so I'm gonna put it this way. I'm gonna screw it in first, make sure it's flush, nice, before we go flip it on the other side. There we go, just like that, it's clipping up. I'm gonna take our three screws, because there's three screws that go on the bottom of this, originally. And it should hold itself in. Okay, there you go. Now it's actually held in perfectly. See that? They spin. You want to do a test too, especially if you're getting fans. Just do a quick little integrity test. If it feels a little bit tight or a little bit rough, you probably have a bad fan. And when you put it in there, it's going to squeak all over again. It's going to have the same problem. But we've been putting the three screws there. Now we just want to go ahead and put it back. Okay, so we just want to make sure. The one thing we do know is there's this little uh, cable that does go through. And we probably want to go in this way because there's a, you see this? There's a headphone jack. And we probably want to go in this way because there's a little hole for it. And that would make it absolutely perfect. So let's put it in this way. There we go. That actually just fit in, kind of slid in itself there. Now we want to make sure we don't cover any of these cables because there's lots of cables coming up. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on fixing the Acer Predator Triton 500 SE uh, fan replacements. You can see, uh, always, just always want to be careful. You don't want to be replacing stuff uh, if you're not too sure. 
uh, especially if you're going to open the board or breaking other things because you don't want to damage something and especially cause a short or do anything else always just be very very careful if you're going to be doing anything especially uh, even though it seems really simple you can see that you have to remove the whole board and do a lot of stuff actually just to get to the fan itself so hope you guys are watching if you did please leave a like really just love, help us a lot subscribe for more content see you guys next video thanks a lot see you guys bye